Get that paper, told that Glock, that's how we live Yeah, my life's a game, I pray I don't get killed They can't believe I got the Glock, this shit for real Can't accept the fact my brother gone, I wanna kill Yeah, I can't go for that, that shit don't sit right Get a cabin to the old nigga, I know what you live like uh, Ain't worried about all, just fuck these hoes and live life Jimpachi Igo, a world-renowned footballer, was seen playing in a match against his rival. This was an impactful match in the World Cup as Igo played for Japan and Noel Noah was seen playing for France. Each team would be going back and forth, but Noel Noah would take the lead. Igo stood no chance as his team just couldn't compete and he had no supporting cast at all. So after this match is where he went to the woman that he was with deciding to now disappear from football completely. She asked if he was truly sure about this decision, as Ego would be thinking of all his memories and just sigh. It was enjoyable while it lasted, but as I am now, I do not have the capabilities for the success that I desire, and Japan does not take football as seriously as I wished. This is when Japan's football keeps going downhill, leading to no World Cups, for a straight decade. While this went on, Igo began raising his family. With a young Isagi being born with a high IQ, he understood and viewed the world differently. He was always on the top of his class in any subject, and when he was old enough, he had talent in every sport. Seeing this at first, Igo paid it no attention, believing his son would be some sort of scholar. But as the boy aged, he became infatuated with the sport of football. Something about it grabbed his attention and never let go. The thing was that he had never played it once. He just enjoyed watching it on TV. The pros were incredible, but Igo knew that Isagi was different. He didn't really talk to his son like a normal parent would. In fact, it made no sense as Isagi wasn't a normal child. Igo then stood over the young boy who was watching football on the TV and asked if he wished to play like that on a grand stage, with millions watching, cheering his name as he would score. Is that the glory that he desired? A 10-year-old Isagi sat silently and then sighed. No. I wish to play football for myself, my own enjoyment and satisfaction. Ego then pushes his glasses further on his face, asking if playing the sport at the common level would provide this satisfaction. And Isagi shook his head. Turning back to his father, no, I want to have the satisfaction of becoming the very best in the world, with his eyes having that sparkle. Ego has a passion, or his passion for football, was reignited. The two share something that most don't realize. That weekend, Isagi and Ego are seen at the training field, with Ego introducing him to another man. This man will be Isagi's coach for this team. Their season had already begun, but Igo had called in for a favor. The coach says for Isagi to join the match and play on the left wing. While watching him sub into the game or the practice match, the coach asks how long his son has been playing football for, with Igo commenting that this was his very first time. They would then turn back to see Isagi just watching, wondering what was going on. Everyone is moving so slow and predictable, he would think. Isagi then watches a player dribble the ball and have it stolen, leading to his team going on the defensive. However, from this same player's blind spot, Isagi would appear, stealing the ball and heading back up the field. Seeing a teammate, he passes and then creates distance, receiving the pass back. Isagi then looks up, having two defenders in his way. His eyes would focus as his mind recalls a similar situation that a player from Spain was facing. Performing a perfect elastico, Isagi gets around both defenders. Now, just the keeper stood in his way. But how could he score? What would I do? What should I do? Should I shoot it into the corners? Hmm. Well, I guess it should go something like this. Isagi pulls his leg back and rips a shot into the net. He leaves his coach starstruck, with his father noting his great talent. He's gifted with a photographic memory and an enhanced perception of the world. Isagi understands people and their actions differently than anyone else. Ego asked if the coach could handle him. 
And the coach nods, saying he'll be a great addition to the team. Then he states, like father, like son. It seems he has your own selfish nature, doesn't he? Well, I can't help it if he wishes to win more than anyone else, can I? Years begin to go by, with Isagi showing off how great he could become. He was a natural-born prodigy who was able to use both feet without fail. And with Ego being his father and mentor, he's trained from the best. Isagi's personality here is actually quite sarcastic as well as curious. He also has a proper body because Ego learns from his mistakes, comparing himself to the current number one. Isagi's mentality was already that of a true egoist. In fact, it was Isagi who came up with his own moves. With this, he began playing in middle school and for club teams, leading, well, leading them to victories over and over again, as he receives many offers from clubs, but he remains where he was in order to be coached by his father. Winning and becoming the best is what truly drives him, but he understands that there are many steps to even getting close to this type of goal. Without even one World Cup under his belt, he won't be able to say it. Around this time is when many generational talents are recognized by the world. Itoshi Sai, a midfielder who is currently in Spain. Don Lorenzo, an ace defender who plays in Italy. And Michael Kaiser, a striker who is in Germany. But there are more. And a young Isagi who was a prodigy, who was still in Japan. He wasn't officially named a new Gen 11 player, but he was recognized to be on the level right under them. The world just hadn't seen him face a true competition yet like the other players, and he was still pretty young. With that, Blue Lock would still happen. As Ego remembers something when thinking of why he couldn't become number one. To make things even harder for Isagi, he shows him no favoritism at all, as he starts on Team Z with the lowest rank, as Isagi was ranked 300, and when the game of tag began, he was the target. He then walked towards the ball, placing his left foot on top of it. With immense striking power, he then sends it into the wall, and it bounces off. He then dodges the ball quickly, and it hits Monk, who wasn't paying attention. Now with Monk being it, he couldn't tag anyone, and the time would shortly run out. Some of them quickly wonder if Isagi was supposed to be that low of a rank, but they couldn't worry about that at all, as they had to keep up with their own training. It lasted several days, with each one of them being pushed to their limits. Even though Isagi had already been doing this kind of monstrous training throughout his life, he still pushed himself. He wanted the best results from all the work that he had put in, as he would also be seen on the practice field at times after the training sessions. Anari points out to Ego, that this kid on Team Z seems to be a very hard worker. When Ego slides his chair over to look who she was talking about, he looks at the screen and waves it off, paying him no attention. She wonders why, but then goes back to monitoring everyone else. With the first selection soon being announced, the team has to figure out who will play where. Of course, everyone claims that they'll be the striker, but Kira, Bachura, Raichi, and Kunigami are the main ones arguing, but Isagi states he doesn't care. Instead, he just wanted to do something else. So he goes to the camp position. But for those who are listening who don't know what the camp position is, cam just stands for center attacking mid, which plays right under the striker. After many rounds of rock, paper, scissors, the striker would be found out to be Kunigami, which was fine, as they had already seen his power shot in their training. The first team that they would face off against was Team X, as no one knew what to expect from this team, but from the jump, Isagi could tell that their players were explosive. Looking at their muscles and how they seemed so relaxed, they were planning a surprise attack, which was fine with him. He only closed his eyes, thinking of an English defender who he had studied. The game begins, with everyone getting crowded in the middle, but Baru being the one to come out with the ball. However, as he seemed to get closer and closer to goal, it was stolen by Isagi. What the heck? Where did this runt come from? I didn't even see him. Isagi looks ahead dribbling without even worrying about the king who was speeding up right behind him. As Baru got closer to Isagi, he then stopped, performing a step over that went through his legs and then spun around Baru. 
This causes the king's head to twist and turn before he then falls to the ground. Isagi would look up, seeing where he was and the distance between himself and the goal. After running up just a little bit more, he was a little further out than the goal box line, but he takes the shot anyway, slamming it into the back of the net, making Team Z go up by one. With the realization that Isagi might be a really good player, Team Z gets a boost in confidence. But then they realize that Isagi is good. That doesn't mean they'll play good. As in the next play, because Isagi isn't defending Baru, he scores his own goal. But this causes Isagi to instantly realize something, so he goes over asking Raichi to do a favor for him. He wants him to man mark Baru, but the striker argues with him. Isagi then says to Raichi that he has the best chance as Baru, well, once he understands how he plays, he'll be able to defend him well. Raichi scoffs, and Kira, who overheard this conversation, is shocked. He understands all of this from just the first two goals that were scored? Who are you really, Isagi? The screen then pans over to Isagi, who stood tall, with a unique pattern in his eyes, still analyzing the match. With his eyes being revealed to have some sort of ability, Isagi then scans the field while smiling. There's no one that can stop me now. Looking around, Isagi is able to scan each player to their current potential on the field, with no one even being close to 100%, let alone 50. He then looked up, and the game continued, with Team Z heading down the field. They actually began passing it around, but Kunigami, their striker, would miss his next shot as Baru guarded him close, leading to him, well, leading to the shot hitting the goalpost, and then being rebounded by Batra, who just barely grabs it before it goes out. He looks up, breaking the ankles of one defender, and then he sees it, an opportunity for success. He sends it out toward the wing of the opposite side where Isagi was wide open. Watching the ball fall into place, Isagi states it's impressive that he can even get off a pass like that at his level. With defenders turning his way, he chooses to not settle the ball at all as that would just waste time. Performing a direct volley, the win from it alone leaves the goalkeeper stunned as he could barely see it, let alone block it. Now, with that being out of the way, Team Z would understand that Isagi must have been given rank 300 on accident. As with that, the match's continuation, well, let's just say that the teams would trade goals evenly but Baru is stopped by a combined effort of Raichi and then Gagamaru. Once realizing how good they were, well, it became easier to stop the Tyrant King, leading to them winning their first match by one goal, making the score 5-4, to four, as now they could celebrate for a little bit, while also having a team meeting, because Ego does give them hints about talents and their weapons that will be needed in this selection. They sit in a room, discussing their weapons, but when it's time for Isagi's turn, he's silent. Then he says it's his shooting power and accuracy. They go along with it, but before the next match, Kira confronts Isagi in a training room. Why did you lie about your abilities? Isagi pays him no attention, stating that they're all fools. Eventually, the team, well, they may turn into opponents, so why reveal what he can actually do? He allows them to think that this is his weapon, for future reference, so he can surprise them with another if he chooses to. Kira actually cuts him off, saying that it's his eyes, as Isagi can somehow envision the field differently than others. But Isagi shrugs this off, and he then walks away but says, I don't think you could say it's a weapon. It just happens to be in my possession. It's like if I give a kid a knife. Sure, it's a weapon, but what could they really do besides harm themselves? Whereas if I give a fully trained assassin a katana, they might do things that are unimaginable. Hearing those cold words, Kira is somehow reminded of Ego, but he forgets this quickly, and then Team 7 would later be seen stepping onto the field the next day to see their new opponents, as it would be Team Y. Isagi looks around, not impressed at all, and then gets into formation with his team, 
as this is where they noticed something, that Isagi's rank had went up as well as his position because he had changed to striker. Anri comments that even though Ego doesn't care for this player at all, he's quite impressive. Ego here actually turns to the screen looking at his son. He's almost pathetic and then sits back down turning away from Anri but giving a slight smirk. The match then kicks off with Team Y passing the ball around from player to player. This strategy was kind of annoying and it was kind of a keep away strategy that began to work until Isagi shouted for his team to just man mark a player in the midfield. With that, Team Y was forced to pass in their defense. Suddenly, Okawa made his move cutting across the field and Nico looks up as he was receiving a pass. Kira sees this and suddenly went to Mark Okawa, reeling that this is why they waited for so long, but he's a step behind him, saying that it might be too late. But a loud thud is heard as he looks back, seeing Isagi slide right in front of Nico, bodying him off the ball. The thud that they heard was Nico's body dropping to the ground. Those eyes of yours are truly pathetic. Isagi now was wide open and scores the first goal of the match, claiming that this cowardly tactic can't work at all. As Kira is dumbfounded, but the rest of the team can't help but celebrate. Isagi was incredible, but just how could he predict this so easily? With their plan being found out and their team being much weaker, Team Y is obliterated by Team Z's offensive players like Kunigami, Chigiri, who will tap into his speed in this match instead of the next one, Bachira, and Isagi. It's funny because as Isagi continues to show off more and more of his progress, his teammates believe that this is the fruits of his labor and his training. But these were only the results from his past training, not anything that he's been doing inside of Blue Lock. In a way, think of it how Goku from Dragon Ball paces himself as a battle goes on. In a way, Isagi is pacing himself in each of his matches, just revealing small bits and pieces of his true strength as a striker. With another win under their belt, Team Z was undefeated in the facility as of now and was still on a high horse, which caused some of them to develop better confidence in their abilities. However, Kira remained cautious of Isagi. Just what was he really up to? Kira decides to follow him and actually train with Isagi. From what he gets, he doesn't do anything out of the ordinary. His diet is balanced. His training isn't too hard or too easy. Everything feels so normal. Until stepping onto the pitch with him, Isagi then asked if Kira wished to play one-on-one. -on -one. It's clear that he wants to truly understand the difference in their strength, and there's only one real way to do that. Kira nods, and Isagi gives them possession first. All right, he's strong, I know that. And he's a good defender, because he stole the ball from Baru and Nico. My only chance to win against him is to do something unorthodox. He wouldn't expect this, so I'll take him head on. Kira then rushes in forward and goes to dribble, but he's cut off at every angle. Then he goes for a shot, but Isagi steps in the way, putting all his cards into this block. But Kira smirks, saying that this is where he wins, faking the shot and going in the opposite direction. He thinks he's wide open, but Isagi, under his breath, calls this hilarious. He spins, blocking the shot and stealing possession of the ball. You know, that might have worked against anyone else, and you could have pulled that off. But not on me. Isagi now dribbles the ball into open space, heading forward towards the opposite goal. Kira then chases after him while thinking, but then it clicks with him. Wait a minute. Why did I just now realize this? Isagi doesn't dribble the ball fast at all. It's almost as if the ball is slowing him down. Kira catches up with him and actually cuts him off and goes for a steal, but Isagi dodges it and then moves around Kira, but his opponent is able to stay with him just for a little bit. I'm not done yet. Kira then turns his body, going in for a steal, but as it looks like it's close, Isagi then states, neither is he. He then rips a shot so strong that it would knock Kira to the ground as it goes into the net. You know, you're quite fun to toy with. But I've grown bored of this. Just make sure you're ready for the next match. Kira, while sitting on the ground, tries to think of what just happened in that split moment. As he replays it in his mind, 
Isagi somehow bodied him off the ball with brute strength, but they were about the same size even though Isagi was taller. But that strength, it was unreal, as Isagi doesn't even look like the strong type. The next day, or a couple days later, the team is seen gathering on the field to face their next opponents, Team W and their formidable twins, that may pose a threat due to how they could sync up on the field. Team W actually starts with the ball, but it's stolen by Raichi and Kira. Itagi was then seen heading up the field, as it would be marked by both of the twins. Team Z at first works around this, as it leaves others open. Chigori heads down the side, giving a cross to Batra, who would score the first goal, but this kind of looks like it infuriates Isagi. With a certain look on his face, the twins believe that they got under his skin. But, through it all, Isagi begins to laugh. Oh man, this is quite hilarious. You two really believe that this is how you'll beat me? Well then, let me show you something. When the game resumes, one of the twins is in locked down by Isagi's defense and has the ball stolen from him. Isagi then begins to head up the field with a similar speed to Chigori, which causes Kira to stop and question himself if Isagi was holding back during their own training. With the other twin cutting him off, Isagi looks up with a crazy look in his eyes. What's wrong? Don't tell me that you're scared. Isagi's aura intensifies as it causes hesitation between the player in front of him. This allows Isagi to blow by him and look towards the keeper. Still, three defenders block his path and his shot. All of you are just pathetic. Isagi stops and curves the high shot around the defenders as it goes into the top corner of the goal out of the goalkeeper's reach. His teammates shout in excitement, surrounding him, as this was some sort of super goal. Isagi simply wipes his face, telling his opponents to come up with a new strategy to defeat him, because this one has too many flaws that he can see through as this is when we get a look into his eyes once again, with Ego watching him on the screen, having a similar look in his face. As we then see both father and son sharing similar thoughts in this moment. With the first goal under their belt, the twins knew that overcoming someone like Isagi would be almost impossible. As Isagi stood at the top of Blue Lock's totem pole at the current moment, this match continues on, and. It's a complete obliteration for Team W. They wouldn't even be able to score due to Kuan here not selling them out. Although even though he remains on their side, I think he might steal a goal from someone like Chigori or Kunigami. But that's all. As for our other players on Team Z, I think that this match, well in this match, Kira and Raichi would be the ones to have a slight awakening shining in their moments with Raichi getting another level of reaction on timing and defense, which leads to a counter. While I think Kira, his awakening might be a little different. I was looking back on his reaction to the original show of his elimination, and he became dark and twisted, so I think his ego would show that. Kinda similar, in a way, to the Destroyer version of Itoshi Ren. Kira here would tap into the dark side of himself, an almost greedy manner, in a way. So he makes sure that he gets the ball and he does what he wants with it, only seeking victory for himself in the most... Hmm. I wouldn't know how to describe it. In the most greedy way he could score. Without passing. Doing movements that draws attention to him. He wants everyone to focus on him. But he does that by now showing off one of his new abilities. And I'll be calling that Kind of like a bait and switch, as it's just a true misdirection move that makes his opponent think one thing while he does a complete other. With everyone on Team Z leveling up together, they get this win and then get ready for the final match of this selection, that being against Team V. They all sit and watch the clips or the highlights of Nagi and the other two people who were on their team. But there were two people missing from this meeting, Isagi and Kira. They were seen on the training field in another 1v1 situation. This time, Isagi was drawing out more and more of Kira's greedy ego, which was making him play even harder. If he could harness this now and overcome it, he might even rival Isagi one day. 
However, Isagi already had a grasp on his own ego and even his flow state. You see, Kira, there are levels to these things. Isagi then dashes around him while dribbling the ball. He then spins around his opponent, making his head turn. See, what you fail to realize is that you have just fell into what you thought was a pool of skill that you had awakened. But this is like an ocean, as there's no telling where it ends. And once you get deep enough in it, you've lost to where you began. Isagi then drops into the ground with an ankle breaker and scores a goal. As he then wipes the sweat off his face while smiling. But this isn't bad at all for a start. He then thinks to himself, I'm progressing a lot faster than I had noticed. It's beginning to get a lot harder and harder for me to tell which foot I was born dominant with in the first place. This is where a flashback montage of every goal that Isagi has scored in Blue Lock was shown to be with his weak foot as he's been training it. And then more of his training on his body to keep it balanced as possible. When Isagi was seen again, Ryo was the one to interrupt him, asking if he truly thinks he can go against Nagi. He's watched his previous matches and he's not impressed, as it seems that Isagi can't win without relying on others. But Isagi can only scoff at this. Yeah, and I've seen your highlights as well, if you can even call them that. I've come to Blue Lock in order to become the very best, nothing else. But it seems that you've come here for other reasons. I'll destroy Nagi right in front of your eyes and make you two realize how useless you are without each other. Isagi then continues to train until match day arrives and both teams step onto the field. As at first, they really wouldn't care if they would win or lose. They've already made it into the next election because of how many times they've won. Team V would start with the ball and Ryo gets it, telling Nagi to get ready. The lazy genius is seen running with his eyes widening, watching Ryo become completely locked down by our protagonist. Isagi leaves him no room to breathe, guarding him close. What's wrong, Mikage? Having trouble? Ryo goes to dribble, but it's stolen, and Isagi activates his own eyes. But while doing so, Kira is seen running right by his side as he came out of nowhere. Yo, Isagi. Let's go. Seeing this, or well, seeing him like this, the two of them have their first chemical reaction here, running through the field in sync. It's not really like Kira was working with Isagi well. No, it was Isagi who was feeding off of Kira's own selfish and greedy ego. As he was just balancing off of that, keeping up with him. Well, in a way, Isagi was slowing himself down, leading to Kira's first goal and his new gluttonous ego. With the first goal being scored by just the two of them working together, Ryo sees an opportunity for Nagi. He wants to recreate something like this, but when trying to do so, they would of course fall short, leading to Ryo not understanding why that was the case. He didn't have time to think, as Team Z would already be on the counter, with Bachara crossing the ball to Chiguri, who ran up the field, but Zantetsu was right there with him. This was a true battle of speed, but the two of them would end up poking the ball out somewhere else as it would land in open space for anyone to get it. As Ryo believed he was the one to trap it, Isagi then jumped into the air and wasted no time performing a volley. Now up two goals, Team Z looked at Team V's top players with pity. If they shut down Nagi, what else could they do, really? This annoyed Ryo, who told Zantetsu and Nagi that they'll need to play harder because he wants to win. The three of them look ahead seeming ready, but Nagi was uninterested, as always. With the game continuing on, Ryo would run into trouble once again, causing Nagi to begin moving on his own. But when Ryo noticed it, he still couldn't get a pass off, as he was double teamed by Sagi and Kira. The two of them would come away with yet another steal, heading up the field, with Isagi scoring another goal. I'm sure during this match, Nagi would start to wake up more and more, but I don't think Ryo would. In fact, Nagi may be guarded too closely by Raichi to even do anything, as he would be man-marking him. Team Z gets the win without any trouble at all, as now, there was a period of intense training before the next selection was even announced, where Isagi took it upon himself to level up even further than before. 
but I'm not talking about his body or his skills on the pitch. No, what I'm describing is his training mentally. He trains his brain and his vision on the field to become an even bigger threat. Using what was learned in the first selection, he's able to now become an even greater genius by reading his opponent's movements and what they were capable of, starting to predict them based on their personality, their ego, their style of play, the tendencies that they have during the game, and more things like that, as he was able to only do that. Because, remember in this story, he has a photographic memory just like his father, so he's able to take in as much information as possible. When entering a new room with his teammates, they see so many other players, and Jinpachi Ego appears on the screen. He goes in depth about what was done in the first selection, saying that here is where they must complete the test before moving on to the next one. Isagi is actually the first one to enter, being followed by Itoshi Rin. While looking on ahead, Isagi realizes what kind of test this is, as it's basically a shooting drill. He really is full of himself. You know, father, if you wanted to create this solely for me, it could have been done. But I understand what you want from me. You want me to feel the threat of competition around me as you once did. Looking towards the holographic keeper, Isagi holds out his fist, claiming that this will be more exciting than he ever expected it to be. We don't get to see actually what happens during this, but all we do see is him exiting with nothing but a smile on his face, as if he was some kid coming out of the store getting everything that he desired. Noticing that he was the first one, he would sit down and just begin thinking, just what should he do now? While waiting on the next person to appear, Ego shows up on one of the screens, making contact with him, finally. Hello there, Isagi. Yes, father. Anri, who was listening, drops her coffee, being so shocked, causing Ego to turn to her. Couldn't you tell that this brat was the only one here with a hint of intellect? Still, he's still an unpolished gem. Isagi scoffs, telling his father to shut up and get to the point. As he asked what he wanted, Ego then gave him a challenge. Try and pass through this selection, without the help of others at all. Score as many times as he thinks he can. Isagi stated that because of the previous exercise, he already planned to do so. Ego then tells his son not to act like a know-it-all, but Isagi rebuttals, saying that he gets that trait directly from him. This makes Ego turn off the screen in agony. But Isagi sits back laughing, going through his mind of what just happened. Eventually, two people do walk in as the first one is of course Itoshi Rin, who actually was aggravated that someone beat him here, as it put Isagi on his radar, wondering how long he had waited, so he asked him, and Isagi says about 20 minutes, as there's no possible way that he's that far ahead of him. And then about 10 more minutes later, Tokimitsu would walk into the room, as all three of them would just team up and move on. Rin was already agitated, but this may mean that he has a rival here in the facility. But how could that be? He does know there were other like variants of the teams, like Team Z, V, X, and other stratospheres of the facility. But he didn't know that they had someone like Isagi, so he'll just have to see. The second team to arrive is Nagi, Kira, and Bachira, as these three step up to face Isagi, saying they'll take him once they win. Isagi opens his eyes, calling them foolish, as now both teams would later be seen standing on the pitch, looking at each other. The first to five goals. Isagi begins with the ball at his feet, and instantly rushed ahead. Kira would be the first one to begin defending him, but, to his shock, Isagi increased his speed, accelerating right by him. Bacha will try to stop him next, but his ankles are shattered by quick dribble moves, and when Nagi tries to block his shot, Isagi would look up, stopping and using his accuracy to perform a curved left-footed shot that goes right around Nagi and into the goal. Anri, who saw this on the screen, told Jinpachi that his son was incredible, but Ego commented how he's not even trying just yet. Isagi has never been the type to reveal all the cards that he has at hand, 
His opponents won't be able to stop him unless they predict the abilities that he's keeping concealed. This is when it's shown that Ego has that very same vision that his son was using. As now, Itoshi Rin, nevertheless, seemed a little shaken up by the ease of this goal, knowing that he could do that himself. But just those movements, the calculations, and the accuracy of the shot reminded him all too well of his elder brother, Itoshi Sai, which brought up a very important question to everyone's mind on the field. Could Isagi be on the level of a new Gen 11 player? This goal was a declaration of war to everyone on the field to let them know that he wasn't playing any games at all. Isagi was actually very serious here. With all eyes on him, he decided to play it off cool, knowing that the next goal may be harder than the last. His opponents would try to use teamwork to get around him, but he relies on the defense of Tokimitsu to get a stop. Kira couldn't see him coming, especially with his crazy strength, but Isagi had predicted all of this in a matter of seconds. As Tokimitsu actually passed it towards Ren, since he was the most open, but he didn't play defense, and Isagi appeared in his blind spot, stealing that pass. The only one close enough to chase after him was Nagi himself, but he was just a step behind Isagi. And due to our MC's acceleration, he's left in the dust. That's some speed. Isagi then scores his second goal, starting to heat up just a little bit. He cracks his neck while telling everyone that he's warmed up and they can play a little more serious. Isagi's visual prowess is shown, as well as his desire to win. Ren walks over to him, saying that they'll clash here and he'll crush him. But he also says he'll destroy Isagi if he tries something like that again making Isagi laugh as he tells him to bring it on. In fact, he wants to see how far he's gotten in his training as he tells everyone to go against him here and now. He holds out his hands and begins laughing while saying he'll take care of them all in this match. Within this three-on-three match, where it begins to become clear that the level of Isagi was just in a different tier, he couldn't be touched at all. Even someone like Ren couldn't keep up with the gap in their strength. And, if he can't keep up, neither can their opponents, as Isagi scores four goals and Ren only scores one. When deciding who would be the best one to take as their fourth teammate, Isagi calls Nagi useless, and he tells Bachira to improve even more. But he wants to see how far the greed of Kira will go in this selection. Making it to the 4v4 stage, they'd have to wait. So while they do so, Isagi begins to train intensely to maximize his output on the field, mastering his visual ability, which I think it's time to give it a name. And since it relies on a person's personality, body capabilities, mental tendencies, let's call this persona vision. Isagi sits down after a long day of training and looks at the screen in front of him, reviewing his last match on what he could have done better. What's pretty crazy is that while they wait on their next challenge, Isagi and Rin continue to go head to head. These two would always battle it out on a practice field sharpening their abilities. However, Isagi held back in order to make it more interesting. Rin, of course, wouldn't know this, believing himself to have gotten so much better in a short amount of time. Then he started to gain the edge on Isagi, but by this time, Nagi and Bachira returned, now having Baru and Chiguri on their side, challenging their friend once again, where he would accept. Even when thinking about it, he had gained the edge. Isagi started with the ball on his feet, making Ren aggravated to some point, but not heavily. The king taunts him, causing Isagi to rush in right towards him. Baru smiles, and the other three surround him in a diamond formation, saying there was no way out at all. Isagi turns his head, looking for an opening as he found it. There it is. He bursted right by Nagi, who wasn't ready at all. Now he was wide open for a shot, although Ren was there to try and steal it. This ends now. Ren believes that this is where he'll defeat Isagi, with the balls flicked over his head and then volleyed into the net. You all are starting to get amusing, although it'll be short-lived. This team that Isagi now faces wasn't backing down, though. 
in this match, they show that they've went over trials time and time again to get where they needed to be. As the game would end up a score of 4-4. Four to four. As Isagi now sat with the ball at the half field mark, looking up, seeing the camera. I hope you're watching, father. Kira, who was ready to receive the ball, asked what he was thinking. As did Nagi. But Isagi claimed he won't hold back during this play. As we get to see a look into Isagi's flow state that began leaking from his body slowly. The thing about it is that his flow state itself represented an intense aura. This was due to Asagi's adaptability and changing how he played in every match. His eyes widen, with his persona vision being shown off as well. Isagi then takes a step ahead, causing everyone to sprint right at him. Seeing Ren, he makes slight eye contact with them and then just shoots it from the half field mark, curving it into the net. And with everyone pressing up here, there was no one in the back to block the shot for the keeper. As the final goal is scored by Isagi, completing his hat trick, as Ren, also had a single goal alongside Kira, and with their defeat happening so suddenly, Isagi begins walking away. I don't really care who to choose, so you all can pick. Just make sure you stay out of my way. Ren follows close behind him, actually realizing that Isagi was on a different level, maybe the same as his brother. It irritated him, so he asked about it. Just how long have you been holding back, and by how much? Isagi was laying up against the wall while they waited on the rest of their teammates, looking at him, asking him to just take a guess. He would smile, turning his head, looking back behind Rin to see Kira, Tokimitsu, and then Nagi, walking towards them. Not a bad choice at all, but he's still useless without someone to pass to him. Moving on to a new room, Ego appears on the screen, congratulating them on being the first group to make it here. But since their skills have grown so much to outclass the other unpolished gems, why not seek a new challenge? The screen lights up with the world-class players on the screen from different countries. This makes Isagi smile and get excited for his next challenge, as what's well funny to him as he sees a familiar face, but we'll get that interaction later. Two days of preparation go by before the World 5 match would begin as they enter the stage to face this team. Stepping on the field, Isagi walks right by the other players and begins speaking French while talking to Julie and Loki. The two catch up in this short amount of time, with Loki surprised that he was here in this facility. Ren and the others find this weird, but Loki states that he looks just like his father. Kira, hearing this, asks who that person was, as Loki had stated this in Japanese so they could understand it. He then turns to Isagi asking that they didn't know. Isagi would shrug his shoulders while smiling, calling him mysterious as usual, but he plans to have a great match against his former teammate. The match would start, and Isagi has the ball going right for Loki, ignoring the others. Oh, so it's like that. We'll bring it, Isagi. The two clash over and over with Isagi keeping the ball. Loki notes his dribbling and his overall control with the ball has improved greatly. Isagi grins as he's just now bursting right by Loki. I should have known not to show you that move at all, but what can I expect from someone like you? This causes Loki to smile, but he states that he knows not to make this a battle of speed as he dashes forward, running past Isagi and getting in front of him once again. This is where the boy stops, catching Loki off guard. It's now or never, and he shoots with his left foot, only to fake it to now get even more open to score with his right foot. Loki would tell the others not to worry about this, but he commends Isagi for his level and skill, as it seems he's now entered the level of genius, referring to the new Gen 11 players. Still, the World 5 find him impressive enough to show off a little more of their skills within this match, as Isagi begins to understand the difference between himself and the world-class abilities. Loki believes this to be fun, toying with everyone, and every time he gets a chance, he battles Loki with his speed. This was until Isagi began predicting Loki's movements, slowly adapting to him to the point where he's able to get a steal on Loki, entering the flow state like no other. Well, that's shocking. Loki turns his head, seeing the sadistic smile of his old friend. That creepy look of yours. 
It never gets old. But I never imagined it'd be used against me. Isagi and his team is able to counter in this moment. But I think due to the World 5 trying harder, Ren would be the one to score the second goal that they would get. But after this is where it basically ends, as Isagi has to live with a painful defeat. Loki would walk over, asking if this is what he wanted, with Isagi raising his head, no longer in the flow state, but with his persona vision active. In his mind, he replaced all of their movements, thoughts, tendencies, running patterns, passing lanes, shooting techniques, and special abilities. Yeah, I'm satisfied, because the next time you face me, I'll destroy you. Loki likes the sound of that, but tells Isagi to be mindful, as they did, well, they did find one final prodigy, and he remains by the side of Loki. Isagi waves this off, and the five of them would leave, with each one of them taking away something different from this match. Rin was aggravated the most, however Ego explained to them that this wasn't a bad showing at all. Now, they waited for the other teams to pass through as Blue Lock was about to enter its next challenge. But we know before that can even begin. Jinpachi Ego declares war against the current U-20 Japan team, and now must work to assemble the team to face them, as Ego returns to Blue Lock and tells them about the match. And he explains how the main scorers of the World 5 games will be the captain of the teams. First is Yoichi Isagi, then Itoshi Rin, Ryusei Shido, and Seishiro Nagi, and then he continues to go down the list of the remaining players as he tells the rest of them to choose who they wish to play with. Once everyone decided, the matches began, and let's just say that Isagi doesn't hold back as much here, as he reached a new level by memorizing the skills of the world-class players at first hand. His playstyle evolves, becoming more patient and drawing out his desired situation to score a goal. And speaking of his goals, his shot patterns change as well as the tempo that he plays with, leading to Isagi's team going undefeated in this short arc, as Ego would go off, and he decides to come up with his team, ending up with Isagi as a striker. As Ren wouldn't start due to him being their backup striker, but right under Isagi, Ego decides to put a player who works well with him, Kira, as he hasn't stopped growing, just because we haven't heard much from him. Kira was still as cunning as ever, and I believe his passing would evolve so much so that Ego was almost forced to place him in this spot to support his son. With the lineup being basically constructed to support Isagi, Ego thinks that they're ready. As both teams are now seen days later waiting to walk out on this grand stage. In the hallway, Isagi looks to his side seeing Itoshi sigh. He wonders how strong he is but pays him no mind at all. Aiko is the one to speak to him, pretty excited to be able to crush him right here. Isagi doesn't reply, but he thinks about it, saying one word, as he says that everything he says is false. They then walk out with the crowd. Well, they were excited, shouting at both teams, as they hoped this to be an exciting match. Isagi wonders how he'll play in front of his father, as the announcers begin to go crazy, with Blue Lock starting with the ball. Isagi sends it back and dashes ahead. Seeing the opportunity, he's able to draw defenders towards him. In the meantime, his team was working the ball up the field. A cross comes to the middle and Aiku jumps to defend it. However, Isagi beats him to the ball, trapping the pass and actually scoring the first goal against the U-20 team. They all get a good look at Isagi seeing that he was already in some type of flow state with his persona vision. Aiku says this may be interesting, and this assumption, well, it was right. Knowing what the U-20 team could do, they go on their own offensive assault, with Itoshi Sai leading them forward. Blue Lock's defender stood no chance, although Kira was able to learn from watching him, as he was an incredible midfielder. Still, Japan's team wouldn't be able to score their first goal without him, as he ties the game, making sure Blue Lock understands their place in the world. The only problem for the U-20 players was the construction of Blue Lock's starting lineup, as Ego didn't just choose the players at random. No, this was the best possible lineup in order 
to ensure Isagi's success at the striker position. And it's shown through their offensive play as the team maneuvers the ball around the pitch, avoiding the strong defenders. Bachara gets it on the wing and works it to the middle where Nagi is able to trap the ball. He then looks towards goal, thinking of shooting, but Aiku defends him, forcing him to pass. As the ball begins to roll towards Kira, Itoshi Sai reveals himself and body blocks him. He tells the young midfielder that his eyes still deceive him, and Kira tries to think of a recovery, but before each of them could even react, the ball was launched into the net by a power shot from Isagi. Reading the game like a children's book, he establishes his dominance to the world. As his team celebrates around him, with Japan actually finding this team amusing. This game still does have a couple minutes left before the half, where the U-20 striker misses another shot, leading to them being down a goal. In the locker room, Itoshi Sai decides to leave. He's seen the striker that he wishes to support. Isagi's dominance over the first half was incredible, as he already had the skill set necessary to almost win them a World Cup. Even though they did have a wild monster on their side in Shido, he doesn't care to make someone like that number one. Still, the U-20 team does decide to sub in Shido as their striker, and Blue Lock also makes some slight changes by moving Yo Hayori and Mikage Ryo onto the field. With this triple threat in the midfield, Isai could expect the most wonderful passes to score his goals. And the match resumes, and it's a great success for Blue Lock in the second half. With such an amazing supporting cast, Isagi is able to shine regardless of any defensive effort. If not for Shido, Japan would have ran out of luck, as he was the one to keep them in the game with his explosive goals, as he was the one to even manmark Isagi in the midfield when he could. This caused the two to clash like no other, with Shido being someone who was unpredictable. His goals matched that spirit. He scores two goals within this half, but Isagi overcomes it by continuing to play in a flow state with his persona vision, which allows him, well, to play as he wishes, getting around Shido time and time again to score. And sure, we could use the other players to score, but this lineup was made to support Isagi alone as he shows off his skills to the world. Still, the other midfielders and defenders do get to shine in this match before it was all over, leading to the score of 4-3, to three, with Blue Lock making a true, well, declaration to the world of football. Isagi finally celebrates the win, holding up his fist to the sky while smiling. Not half bad, huh, father? Jinpachi Ego looks down, clenching his own fist, claiming that Blue Lock is a success. Isagi gets a post-game interview, where he states to the reporter that he was aiming to be the next number one in the world. She calls this a tough goal, as Noel Noah was the current number one, and Isagi nods, welcoming all challenges that come with this, as he's ready to take on the world of football by force. When the strikers return back to Blue Lock, they see that many from the U-20 match are here as well. Jinpachi Ego describes all the trials that they've went through thus far, and where that has led them now. As they'll now begin, the Neo Egoist League, where their environment will dictate their future. With all their options now appearing, Isagi looked around wondering what suited him best. An environment just for him, where he could claim victory over the world, becoming the next number one. A place that could produce a striker through results and logic. Isagi steps through the bigger doors, looking ahead and entering the Italy wing. Many follow him as they would enter greeting their new mentor. Mark Snuffy greets them, asking what football means to them. Some would give their answers, with Isagi pondering, then telling him that it's life, a way of life, that is. So Snuffy asked him if he'd be dead if he lost the ability to play football, and Isagi nodded. In his terms, he would be. Snuffy then goes on to say that it's much more than that, as it can be a job. And he explains it further through his strategies telling them that right now they have two contenders for their leaders in Isagi and Baru. He wonders who will come out on top, but Isagi ignores Baru. I see no one who stands in my way, but the master class strikers and the world class players right now. Snuffy commends this statement, 
but then also explains that those around him will soon reach that level. Training begins for the Ubers, and many get familiar with each other, with Don Lorenzo actually trying to get close to Isagi. He says he thinks he's interesting, as he was the ace of the U-20 match. He wants to defend him. However, he doesn't mind working with them either to accomplish a job set for them by their master. However, Isagi begins to tell them, or tell him, that on top of that job he has his own on becoming number one, so he needs to get ready. Snuffy and Isagi actually do have a 1v1 before the Uber's first match, wherein that Isagi begins with the ball, dribbling, moving around the master defender. Nice moves, but you have to do more than that. Snuffy then blocks his path, going in for the steal. Isagi flicks the ball over his head and then traps it, shocking him. He's gotten good in just a short amount of time. Impressive. But this wasn't his best option. Snuffy then tries to block off his body, but Isagi spins around him and then stops changing his pace to sprint right by him. Isagi would then look at him, saying that I'm done messing around. I'll show you right now why I'll become the next number one. The story of our protagonist then cuts to their first match in the neo egoist League, as they're seen on the field going up against Paris, who sends out Itoshi Ren first. Still, the Ubers begin with the ball, and Isagi sends it back, following the plan of Snuffy. This leads to Don Lorenzo running up the field and getting into a 1v1 versus Charles. The young prodigy is outsped for the moment, but he manipulates Lorenzo into running right into Choppy who guards him close. However, this play, Isagi makes his presence known and makes his own move, and he gets the ball passed to him. With defenders on his back, Snuffy and Loki comment how this isn't the ideal situation for him to get a goal. Snuffy's eyes then begin to glow as he tells the young prodigy that Isagi is more special than they know it. Isagi holds his own, but then drops his shoulder, spinning right around him to get in sight of the goal. But there were still two defenders blocking his shot path. This is where he reveals a perfected curve shot that hits the top corner going into the goal. Lorenzo and Aiku crowd Isagi, saying that he's incredible, but Ren was infuriated. This shot was on the same level, if not better than his brother's. PXG then responds with Charles getting a goal through the use of Itoshi Ren and his new power shot, which would shock Isagi. But that lets both teams know who is the true ace. And seeing this firsthand, Don Lorenzo would choose to mark Ren, but Isagi stops him, saying that the real ace of this match was Charles. He explains it further, telling Lorenzo not to fully commit to him. Actually, instead, he needs to mark the passing lanes, as he has the speed to do so. This slight change in their strategy on the fly led to the next two goals for the Ubers team, as they were the winners. PXG and Charles couldn't get the ball through, especially if Nico, Lorenzo, Aryu were guarding the passing lanes. And Aiku, well, he was focused on Rin. Of course, these two goals are scored by Isagi, who uses a new power shot, similar to the one that his father was able to use. And then, a volley from a corner kick. Knowing that this may be one of their toughest matches, Isagi is actually excited for what's to come next in the neo Egoist League as it's going to push him to a new level. Playing against Charles actually did so as well, updating his own meta vision to see the field even greater. The Ubers continue training in preparation for their next match against Spain, and this is where we see the king. Well, he returns, challenging Isagi for the starting position. Isagi looks at Snuffy, who tells Baru if he can steal the ball from Isagi once, then he'd be awarded what he wanted. The king's lion aura flared up as he charged right in at Isagi, who dodged him by dribbling, and then spun around him again. Baru's eyes would turn towards that direction, but Isagi was gone once again. Dancing around the self-proclaimed king, Isagi almost began laughing to himself. Toying with the defender wasn't his style at all, so let's make this quick. Isagi nutmegs Baru, and then goes through him, shooting, but Baru was right there, as his foot then blocks the path. I'm not done with you yet, runt. Isagi lowers his head and then lifts it, showing Metavision as he chops the ball, stealing Baru's signature move. And in this moment, the king is brought to the ground with an ankle breaker, and Isagi shoots a left-footed shot. 
Despair once again fills the air and the king's mind as Snuffy claims that the true successor of the Ubers is the son of Jinpachi Igo, Isagi. What actually happens next is Snuffy and Isagi approach two players who will actually be critical in the next matches, Iki Niko and Shuto Sendo. Snuffy changes Sendo to the position of midfielder in order to create an outlet passer for Isagi and Lorenzo, while Niko will be used to read the passing lanes and potential attacks to a higher level. Snuffy trains Niko's vision, awakening metavision within the young player, but taking it to a higher level with his specific instruction. As for Sendo, Isagi takes him to his own training with himself and Lorenzo, as they would go through different simulations to make him an insane passer, as they would also go through the film of Charles and Itoshi Sai to make him understand the passes that they desired in order to win the next match. And what's actually funny is that Lorenzo and Isagi become closer. They were then seen walking onto the stage of their next match, with Lorenzo leaning over with his smug smile and his gold teeth, asking Isagi who he should guard. And Isagi smiles. Well, I think we both know it's a no-brainer. Megumi Bachira is their ace, and I'm sure of it. You'll take him down easy, and we'll win. Lorenzo and his ego are shown as this match will begin. Spain works the ball down the field, but as they go to pass to Bachira, he's blocked off by Lorenzo, and the pass is intercepted by Iki Nico. Bachira's eyes widen as both defenders crack a smile. Nico then passes it to Sendo, who dribbles up the field, making his way around defenders before chipping it to Isagi, who jumps into the air, heading it into the net. Snuffy turns to Lavino, telling him that his Ubers have evolved even further since their last match, so any data that they have on them is outdated. When FC Barcher goes to counter in their next possession, they weren't able to even make it past the half-field mark, as Lorenzo gets a steal on Bachera, drawing the defenders in and then laughing. I gotcha. He then drops off the pass to Isagi, who uses a direct shot to score another goal. The two would high-five, telling Spain that the Ubers are now taking over. The final goal is scored in the same fashion as the one before, with another hat trick for Isagi, taking him to rank number one on the leaderboard with the biggest offer, being now worth 35 million yen, and Itoshi Ren right under him at 28 million. As Snuffy once again commends his team, but he tells him that their next match may be the hardest one yet, with Michael Kaiser and Alexis Ness, Ryosuke Kira, and Rensuke Kunigami. Their offense was currently the best, but the Ubers had the best defense. While studying their next opponents, Isagi is the one to come up with a strategy that will throw them off completely. Once hearing it, Snuffy actually likes it, as everyone then turns and looks towards a very quiet player. Bastard Munkin is then seen on the field, awaiting the Ubers, but to their shock, two players walk out leading them, Baru and Isagi. Since they haven't even seen Baru in action, they don't know what to expect at all, and with the two powerhouses leading them, this might be troublesome. The match then begins and Isagi runs out, ahead of Baru, but Baru moves around him. Defenders take note of that, that Isagi is getting in position, but Kaiser goes right by him, guarding Lorenzo. Made you move. Kaiser was confused, but then the pass is made to Sendo, who breaks down Ness, as he's shocked. What the hell? Since when could he dribble like that? As after the Spain matchup, Snuffy took it upon himself to actually improve Sendo's footwork to new heights. This is when Sendo looks up, having a completely different vision. It's almost like a target within his eye. Pinpoint accuracy. Sending a perfect pass to the king. Baru was right there, as he was only being guarded by Raichi. And he got ready to trap the ball. But out of nowhere, Isagi jumps into the air, letting his chest get it. Good work, you lousy king. Isagi then controls it, volleying it into the net. Isagi and Sendo are then seen to have an even better chemical reaction here, thanks to Sendo's new vision and Isagi's upgraded metavision. Snuffy begins to chuckle, telling the world's number one that Isagi is just like his old rival, using those around him to get what he wants. 
Noah Noah calls this strategy pathetic. And Snuffy checks him, saying he needs to be careful with his words. Bastard Munkin now has possession of the ball and goes through their usual plays, trying to get Kaiser a goal. But remember, Kira is here as well, working around everyone. But because of this, Lorenzo would be able to deflect the Kaiser impact, and Kira is the one here to pick up the pieces with a left footed knuckleball as it looks like it was about to go in. It was then blocked by the head of Oliver Aiku, and then Ryu traps it. Sorry, kid, but it may look like we have one goalkeeper, but in actuality, we have three. This is when the Uber's iron wall was shown, as Ryu gives it to Nico, who is contested by Kunigami. So he drops it off once again with a backhill pass to Lorenzo. Now having possession once again, his zombie dribbling carries him up the field as he makes it to the goal. Kaiser wonders who would get the ball, Isagi or Baru. But Lorenzo does a backhill pass, sending it to Sendo. Nice pass, you freak. Anytime, Mr. Eagle Vision. Sendo then scoffs at this nickname, but uses his pinpoint accuracy to send a shot right to goal. With everyone stops, believing it to go in. But it actually hits the right side post, and Sendo tells them that it was never a shot in the first place. As no one could see it, but Isagi could getting the rebound to score another goal on Gagamaru. Baru was even more infuriated. Being used like this, he couldn't do anything. In a similar fashion to Nagi, he begins to lose his ego and is subbed out due to Noel Noah subbing in for Kunigami on the opposing side. So Snuffy has to take Baru out for himself, claiming that this to be the climax of yet another win. He would be right, as even with Noel Noah, Germany struggled to get open for a shot, with everything being read by the defenders of Italy. Isagi once again scores the final goal, but he does so with a bicycle kick that would leave the world in shock. Kaiser told Isagi that this wasn't over, but it truly was, as Isagi was now in the realm of the world-class players, and he showed his true strength in the next match against England, where he scored without the passes of Sendo, showing that he could create opportunities for himself as a striker. Meaning that here, the Ubers would go undefeated in the Neo Egoist League, with Jinpachi Ego returning to his son, telling him that he was the world's current number one striker under 20. But he asked if that satisfied him enough, and Isagi stated no, as he was still chasing after Noel Noah. His father smiled as we see the two of them begin to prepare for something even greater to come. As this is where our story would conclude. I hope you all enjoyed it. As this is Zero. And I'll catch you all on the next one.